Thank you, Ada, okay, and God bless you. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, Pastor Paul? It's not around yet. Yes, uh, good evening, church. Uh, I want to use this uh, opportunity to thank all the saints of Mount Zion Fellowship Church, uh, most especially all the, all the dedicated ones that um, made the Bible study class a success. We want to thank our General Wasia, Pastor Mana, who had given us this um, enabling um, environment and opportunity to be able to come together every Wednesday to study the Word of God. His um, Jack's job would not have been successful if it hadn't been for dedicated uh, uh, saints, you know, that we have amidst us. And I'm so proud. And, and your contribution is what has given me the, the encouragement to keep going, to keep striving, to make sure that we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody. So tonight is the end of the long journey of the book of Hebrew that we started a uh, few weeks ago from chapter 1 and we have 13 chapters in the whole of Hebrew so tonight is the end of the remaining verses in chapter 13 which is verses 18 to 25 and it's uh, such a very very interesting um, letter that the author of the Hebrew has written to his fellow Jews and uh, there are so many school of thoughts some people believe rightly that um, the author was uh, Apostle Paul some said no it couldn't be Apostle Paul there must be somebody else that were, had um, had a very very deep relationship with uh, Apostle Paul who also was in prison with him some people felt that it was it could it, it could have been Timothy, but it could not it couldn't be Timothy because Timothy was in prison and it could not be Titus. So who was the author of the Hebrew? Nobody knows. But definitely it's, it wasn't one of the disciples. So we got to read tonight from verses eighteen to twenty five of that chapter thirteen, and maybe it can give us a clue as to who is the author of the Hebrew. Just open your Bible to Hebrew 13 and I will be reading from verses 18 to 25. And if uh, Pastor Pat joins us, he will take over because he is supposed to be the one to lead us tonight. Hebrew 13 verses 18 to 25. It reads, it says, pray for us for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things, desiring to live honorably. But I especially urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. We don't know who is writing it, it's just a pray for us. Who are they? Who are they that is saying pray for us? For we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things, desiring to live honorably. But I, I especially urge you to do this, to pray for us, that I may be restored to you the sooner that I may come back to you very soon. Then, then, it, it, then you give them the benediction like a father giving benediction to his children. Now, may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you complete in every good work to do his will working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever Amen verse 22 then he went on to say and I appeal to you brethren bear with the word of exhortation for I have written to you in few words note that our brother Timothy has been set free 
with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. Greet all those who rule over you, and all the saints, and those from Italy greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen. So, which means that if he says that, know that our brother Timothy has been set free, that is, he has been set free from prison, so, it could, so, so the writer could not have been Timothy. Now we know that there are so many people, so many people also associated with Timothy, not Paul alone. Not Paul alone. So we cannot quickly jump into conclusion to say that in, in, verse, in, in that verse 22, that I appeal to you, brethren, bear with the word of the exhortation. For I have written to you a few words, but know that our brother Timothy has been set free, with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. So Apostle Paul will not call Timothy our brother. Because if you remember when we were reading, studying uh, Timothy and Titus, Apostle Paul took Timothy as his own spiritual son. He adopted Timothy. So, so that's the age, a, a very, 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 very uh, a large age, age gap between Timothy and Apostle Paul. So, which means that Apostle Paul could not have been referring to Timothy in verse 23 as brother Timothy, with whom I shall see you soon. So, which means that the writer will also have been one of the, the favorites of Apostle Paul that Apostle Paul brought up. So, now here. The apostle that wrote this thing, he recommends himself and his fellow sufferers to the prayers of the Hebrew believers, as we read in verse 18. He said, Pray for us. Um, that is, pray for me and for Timothy. He mentioned Timothy in verse 23. And for all those of us who labor in the ministry of the gospel. So, in other words, he's making them to understand that. The, the, that, that's, that the, there is no uh, red carpet in ministry and Jesus did not promise us that everything is going to be in rosy in ministry because everything was not rosy for the master so it could not have been rosy for us but he warned us and he gave us that assurance that we, we, we must not be afraid we, we, we must not lose courage, we must endure to the end. That, 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 that um, if you remember, he, he, he said, you should, you should not fear the people that can destroy the kind of, the kind of body, the flesh alone, but cannot touch the soul, but fear the one that can destroy the flesh and the soul. So which means that no matter the persecution you suffer, no matter the flogging, no matter the, the, the bullets that you receive, it is the flesh they are inflicting pain upon, but not your spirit, not your soul. So, and that was why Apostle Paul was making us to understand that when you are suffering for Jesus Christ, rejoice. And that was the reason why Paul and Silas were singing. When after they have been beaten, and then they were chained, with, with, they were chained down inside the prison with so many girls there, what were they doing? They were singing. And, they, they, and, and all, the, all, the, all, the, all the other the prisoners, they were listening to them, they just couldn't believe it. To the extent that when the earthquake started shaking, the whole foundation of the prison yard was, was turned to pieces. The, the chain, everything got loose. But they didn't run away. And, and, and the prison keeper was going, to, was going to kill himself because if any prisoner should escape in those days, they just ordered the, 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 the warden of that prison to be, to, be, to be beheaded straight away. So he was going to kill himself. Apostle Paul said, don't, don't kill yourself, for we are here. So Apostle Paul is a typical example of a, a good leader, a good leader with a, a good example. He, he was preaching what he was practicing. But we are lucky today, especially in America, 
where we have freedom of speech, where we can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without being stoned, without being imprisoned. But despite the fact that we are blessed with that kind of privilege and opportunity and freedom, we still cannot suffer for Jesus Christ. We still cannot sacrifice one hour, 30 minutes for Jesus Christ, maybe on Wednesday or Monday, to fellowship with our fellow brethren, to study the word of God is too much for us. I don't have the time. I don't I cannot make up the time. But you can make up the time to go to work, to go to Paris, to go to, 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 to picture houses and but and God is the owner of all this time. But you consider as it to say I'm suffering myself to drop everything that I'm doing to come together and study the word of God. So that's what Apostle Paul is saying here. That you should pray for them. He said, he said, he said, he said, ministers need. He said, he said, the apostle recommends himself and his fellow sufferer to the prayers of the Hebrew believers. Pray for us, for me, and for Timothy. He mentioned Timothy in, in, in verse 23. And for all those of us who labor in the ministry of the gospel. And this is one part of the duty which people owe to their ministers. A great duty, the of the church, owe to all the pastors in the church. And what is that obligation they owe to all the pastors and all the leaders? Ministers need prayers of the people. And the more honestly the people pray for their ministers, the more benefit they may expect to reap from their ministry. They should pray that God will teach those who are to teach them. That he will make them vigilant and wise and zealous and successful. That he will assist them in all their labors, support them under all burdens, and strengthen them under all their temptations. And that was what Elder Oben was praying about just a few minutes ago. He said how this man was able to do it, he didn't know. How he was able to maintain the Bible study every Wednesday without failing one Wednesday, without missing or forgetting to post on Wednesday, how he was able to do it, he didn't know. It is because of your prayer. It's not because of, uh, of, of uh, 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 one's ability or one's uh, righteousness. No. Because it is, it is, it is beyond a human and uh, 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 a human task. It, it, it is not something that you can you can you can boast about. But the grace of God through the prayer of all the members of the church, that is what uh, the, the, the writer of this uh, 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 chapter is saying. Is that all ministers they need prayer? Now the question I want to ask tonight is, is that apart from the leaders, apart from the apart, apart from the ministers, who else do you think need prayer of the people they need? Why do we pray for our, 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 our head of state? Why do we pray for our ministers? Why do we pray for our fathers? Now, the question I want to ask, does the husbands also need prayer from the children and the, and the wives? Can somebody answer that question for me? And does the, and, and does the wife also need prayer from the husband? Can somebody answer that question for me? Oh, absolutely. Why? Hmm? Why does your wife need to be praying for you all the time? And, and why do you think you also owe her the obligation to pray for your wife? That, that is, the husband has the obligation to pray for their wives. Why? Because after all, the husband is the, is the one supplying the food. is the one that is doing all the donkey job. 
and, and the wife just sit down there and eat and bring up the children but why does the husband need to pray again for her Amen. question now it's um, the the one thing people don't understand is the, the the position that the general overseer or a pastor in charge of a parish occupies because if you remember they said even in any uh, uh, any any setting they said like like, like uh, when um, a king saw went to war the Philistines were saying just capture the, the head just capture either Ezekiah or capture uh, Ahab or capture um, um, saw the whole flock will scatter Absolutely. and it's the same thing capture Apostle Peter the whole disciples will scatter capture Jesus the whole flock will scatter and it's the same principle up to today that say okay Manzano Fellowship Church capture Pastor Mana everybody will scatter and that is why we need to pray for our general overseer we need to pray for all our pastors because Satan is not interested in idle hands 
Satan is not interested in wishy washy Christians. Satan is not interested in bench warmer Christians. Satan is not interested in lethargic, spiritually lethargic Christians. Satan is, is, is focusing on the people that are very zealous, passionate for Christ, people that are continuously leading people, leading people away from the gate of hell. Because the, 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 the scripture is just like I wonder, it said the, 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 the road that leads to, to, to salvation is narrow. He said it's narrow. He said, but you have to even struggle to enter through that narrow gate. Many will still struggle. That's why the fact that it is narrow. Many, many people will still struggle to enter through that gate. And wide is the gate that, that leads to hell. And a lot of people are just rushing, rushing, rushing towards it. So Satan is now on his own last journey to everlasting pit. And is anxious to recruit as many people as possible along with him. And we can see everything happening in the world today. But the author of the of the, of this of this uh, 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 Hebrew is so humble. He is so humble that that he said we must trust. We have a good conscience. Many of the Jews had a bad opinion of Paul because he, being a Hebrew of the Jew, had cast off the Levitical law and preached of Jesus Christ. Now, look at this one now. We don't know who is the author of the Hebrew, but he is saying that in verse 18 that many of the Jews had a bad opinion of Paul because he, being a Hebrew of the Hebrews, had cast off the Levitical law and preached of Christ now that he had modestly assert his own integrity. Now, who was Apostle Paul? If you remember, Apostle Paul was Saul of Tarsus. And he was a Pharisee. He was a lawyer, a very, very educated, sound, sound educated man from Tarsus. And he trained under the best professor of those days he trained under him Gamaliel Gamaliel one of the, the best professors of those days so he was, a, he was a, a Pharisee and he was very very ambitious he was very ambitious so when, 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 when the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ all of a sudden uh, uh, bombarded the, the Levitical order it was it, it was it was a shock to them. They just couldn't believe it, and you cannot blame them. They, it, because one thing is, Jesus Christ did not come to come and teach them a new doctrine, and Jesus Christ did not even make an attempt to teach them a new doctrine. He was still basing all all his teachings on the on on, on what was on ground. And that's why he said, I did not come to destroy the law. I did not come to destroy what, I, what has already been given to you, but to complement it. In other words, that, that that law was given to you to prepare you for one monolithic God. Because one thing is, before Jesus Christ came, when they were in Egypt, they were in Egypt for almost 400 years and nobody could live on 400 years so so in other words the 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 the, the, the generation that went to egypt we are not the generation that left egypt about four or five generations so they have already forgotten everything not not completely about about about, about god jehovah because the jews the jews they kept themselves to themselves so they don't intermarry they don't intermarry, they don't mix, they don't do anything. So so that so that the Jews were still practicing their religion. And that was why they settled in the land of Goshen in Egypt. But no matter how much conservative they may be, no matter how much reserved they may be, you will still find some rebellious ones among them that will go to, to mix up with the Egyptians. 
and they will, they will now bring the false doctrines, the false gods of the Egyptians. And you, because one thing, there's no way you cannot stay in a place for 200 years and not uh, buy into the custom, the, 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 the tradition, and way of life of the people. It's not possible. You just have to. Because it, look, look, look at what happened to uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel. They were not the only one that was brought by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar carried also all, 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 all the children of the princes of, of uh, Israel from the north and then Judah from the south. And they were all eating, eating uh, uh, king's food, drinking uh, uh, king's wine. But, but Daniel and, 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 his, and, and his, you can change our name. You can change our name, our Jewish name. You can change it to your to your to your uh, 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 Babylon name, but you cannot change our core principle. You cannot change our core value, what we have been trained with, and and that mosaic law will protect us from being corrupted. So they refuse, but other people. They, they, they just yielded it. I mean, they, they were so happy that free food, free wine, and everything. So that is what we are saying here, that that that, uh, that Apostle Paul, because because this one now is saying, because Apostle Paul now, he was, he was there, he was thinking that he was fighting for God by persecuting the Christians. Because it was very, very hard for them to, to depart away from, from, from the law of Moses, from the Mosaic, the, 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 the Levitical order. They, because the fact, the, the fact is that they were even benefited, because all the Pharisees, they were, they were enjoying, just like the white evangelicals today, they were enjoying the monopoly, the power, authority, and everything. So they were using the religion to, 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 to suppress other people. So they would never, never allow for anybody to come and change. So they saw Jesus Christ as a rebellious leader because they were not expecting the Messiah to come from Nazareth. And then that's why Daniel, I mean, that was when Nathaniel said, when, when Nathaniel was called by his brother, I said, I've seen the Messiah. I said, from where is he? He said, from, Naz it's from, from, from Nazareth. He said, what? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Then he said, come and see. But they made a mistake. They made a mistake because Jesus Christ did not come from Nazareth. Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem to fulfill that prophecy. But because of Herod, his father did not take him back to where they were in Galilee. So he took, he took him to Nazareth from where he developed, he grew up there. So they thought Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So they missed they missed that history. They didn't know that that was the Messiah. And that's why they didn't believe him. But Jesus Christ now said that he to his own disciple, he said, don't be afraid. He said, don't be surprised. He said, because one thing is, my gospel is the new wine. And you cannot put a new wine into an old uh, 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 skin bag. It will burst it. It will burst it. So Apostle Paul now, before he could now get that that concept of the new the new doctrine, the new gospel of Jesus Christ, the new gospel of freedom, it took Jesus Christ himself to appear to him on the way to Damascus. He was blinded for three days. Those three days that he was was in total darkness was was in time for him to to, to meditate for him. To come back to his senses for him to, to shed that garment of the old garment and now we are the new garment. So by the time that, that the Lord now sent Ananas to him to go and open his eyes, he was, he, he was a converted Christian. He was a converted believer then. So, so you could see that it is not easy to just go on the street. I want to evangelize to, to change and unchurch people to Jesus Christ. 
you need more than that. You need to pray. You need to sacrifice. You need to fast. You need to pray that God will give you utterance. Because it's, it's not your word that is converting that person, but it is God himself in you that is converting, that is arresting, that convicting that person to Jesus Christ. So evangelism is not easy at all. So they did, and that's why when Apostle Paul now became a, a Christian now, from, uh, from, from Paul of Tarsus, the Pharisee, to Paul, no more so, but to Paul, the apostle, the youngest apostle, they rejected him. They wanted to kill him in Damascus, if you remember. And they had to let him down through a basket to run away. So, so that is what we, uh, that is what he's saying that you have to pray for. But he didn't. He, he did not uh, assert his own influence. As to say, he's a he, he's a righteous man. He, no, no. He said we. He no modestly asserting his own authority, integrity. He said no. He said we trust. We have a good conscience. He didn't say I know I have a good conscience because I've met with Jesus Christ. No. He said we we trust. We have a good conscience. We think. We suppose we are we, 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 we are convinced that we have a good conscience in all things and willing to live honestly. We trust. He might have said we know, but he chose to speak in a humble style to teach us all not to be too confident of ourselves, but to maintain a godly jealousy over our own hearts. We trust we have a good conscience an enlightened and well-informed conscience, a clean and pure conscience, a tender and faithful conscience, a conscience testifying for us, not against us, a good conscience in all things, in the duties both of the first and second table towards God and towards men, and especially in all things pertaining to our ministry. We will act honestly and sincerely in all things. Now, what do, we, what do we find here? We find humility. We find modesty. We find everything. Now, I want to ask a question again. Does, does, what, what do you think should be the, 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 the attitude of a leader? It can be an overseer. It can be a bishop. It can be a pastor. What 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 are the what, what are the characteristic features that you consider this one to be a good shepherd? In other words, what are the qualities of a good shepherd? Because we have seen so many of these pastors, uh, and and we have also worked on that many of these overseer, many of these bishop. Some of them you cannot even approach them. Some of them you don't even cannot speak freely with them. Some of them you cannot even ask them questions. They are so pompous, so arrogant, and 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 the, the clothes they wear. Uh, 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 designer made and everything, uh, the, the, the the Rolex watch, everything. If we do even practice because they they, they they work in the entourage of bodyguards. Can those people lead anybody to Christ? So in other words, what, what do you expect to find in a pastor before you can trust him? Yeah. A good conscience. Conscience. That's right. You know, we are convinced. That's right. You see, it, it, that's as the word of God is a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. the, the, the other is asking for prayer, not pray for us. That's right. But who are they praying for? Mm -hmm. What kind of life are you living? Understand, I say yes, that's exactly what it is. That's right. It's not only that it's 
that's fair. And, 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 and you know what, one of the things that's strange is that That's right. That's right. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. I think sometimes it's a humility for a leader to ask for prayer. That's true. But we should really be, you know, it should be part of what we do ask for prayer and who we be praying for others as well. So, you know, and I, I, I just, you know, wanted to contribute, you know. Thank you, sir. So, in other words, what exactly do we understand? I'm coming to uh, uh, um, uh, Dr. Osman. What do we really understand by a good conscience? Is that a good conscience is something that has respect to all God's commands and all our duties. A good conscience is one that has respect for all God's commands. Even though it may be difficult for us to observe all the Ten Commands. But we 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 are because every because we are we are in, in this this lifespan in which we are we are developing every day on because nobody is perfect and we cannot reach a, a, a stage of perfection but every day we must improve we must improve so that's what the author is saying that a good conscience has respect to all God's command and our duty to to God to Christ to ourselves to the ministry. To the community, and then he said, those who have that good conscience, they yet they still need prayer. So, in other words, a good conscience does not mean that because you can obey all the ten commands or you 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 you, you can do everything, then you don't need prayer. You still need prayer. And then, conscientious ministers are public blessing, and they deserve the prayers of the people. Conscientious ministers are blessing to the people, and we have a typical example here in Mount Zion Fellowship Church because I have been able to to go through under about three or four pastors over here. But Pastor Mana is not because he's here tonight. It's a blessing to us because he reaches out to everybody. He sacrifices his time to distribute food, to do everything. And it calls you on the phone. A lot of pastors don't bother to call anybody on the phone. No. You are the one to call them. And even when you want to go and see them, you, you have to go to their secretary. But here we have a general overseer. He will call you, call your go visit to your house and everything. Anybody can just call him, say, my, my son is doing bad I want you to be there to come and pray for him. He will say, okay, I'm coming. If I have the time, I will come. So, so it is very, 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 very difficult to find such conscientious ministers. And when you have them, we have to appreciate them. And we have to continue to pray for them. So before I, before I move on, uh, uh, Dr. Osman, yeah, over to you. That's right, yeah, yeah, that's right.
Kata. Ya. Yes, another question I want to ask tonight is uh, when he said that another reason why he desires their prayer in verse, in verse 19 is that he had hoped thereby to be sooner restored to them. That he has been, he has been nursing the, 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 the desire to be with them very soon, to visit them back again. In, in other words, is telling us that he has formerly been there and, and is absent from them. So now we now have a, a similar situation here, like last year, our own general overseer, Eda Obeng, they went to Koko, they went to Techima. And if they want to go back again, why do they need prayer? Why do they have to ask us to pray for them? Because we don't know what we are going to meet when we go back after one year that we have been absent. What are the things that mitigating that or needed that prayer? What are what are the fears that that uh, could be could be waiting for them after one year or two years of absence, and they want to go back into that territory. They want to go back into all the places because the Apostle Paul, after 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 the, the first missionary journey. From, from 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 that Damascus, he, he, you know, to all these places, he, he went back again. He needed prayer. So if 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 Eda Beng now and Pastor Mana wants to go back again to that place again, what would they have to solicit our prayer? What 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 are the fears could be in their mind? Can somebody tell me? Yes, sir. Yeah.
they cannot take for granted that se this second time everything has everything be okay. No? No. Oh, okay. In other words, in other words, uh, 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 um, missionaries should not take for granted that because they have been there two years ago and they were well received, they planted. So when they are going now, everything is rosy. They are going to meet people with, with welcome arms. Hmm? No way. Hmm. Can Pastor Mana just give us an insight or what 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 could be the fears of missionaries when they are going back again to a to a known terry, not unknown terry, but a known terry that they've been two years ago. And they they, they, they want to go back again, but they still not seeing fear and they, 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 they soliciting for prayer. Why? Pastor Lama, let me just before Pastor Manica, let me just give you a typical example okay. of a missionary that went Mm -hmm. Where the devil himself is operating. Okay. And this man was a man of prayer. Then to God, he didn't have a that was the little children that own it. Then to God, he prayed on picket. He went to the village and they offered him food and put the, the person in it. Mm -hmm. This man ate the food. And the next morning, they went to visit the house so they would take the, the dead body out. But before they got to the door, people were walking outside to them. Hallelujah. And that's prayer. The devil is going out and will fast and pray for days. To be in being with power. And because of that miracle, they were surprised because nobody survived with their person. That man turned the village to Christ. Amen. The entire village they accepted Christ. That's true. Because they, they were confused. That's true. When, 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 when Christ walked, the devil get confused. But it can only happen with people of prayer. That's right. God yeah. bless you, Pastor Lamar. I just wanted to share that testimony. Yeah, so I, I want uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor uh, Mana just to throw some light because it, 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 it seems to be an obvious question or maybe a simple question or, or question that um, that we should know about, but no, but we should we should assume that we know the answer. Because some people still feel that why why, why should they be afraid to go back to where they have been before up to their they are going to meet their friends and all this thing? Why do they still need prayer? Because prayer is key for everything. Okay. Yes, 
That's right. I'm sure everybody understands now why, why we need to pray. I'm sure, I'm sure. Thank you so much, sir. So, so, the, author, so the author now offer up prayer to God to them, you know, for them also. You know, for being willing to do what for them as he desire and they should do for him. In other words, they are exchanging prayer. The pastors need prayer and the congregation also need prayer. And he now is in verse 20, he said, the God of peace. So it, 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 it's a very, very excellent prayer. He said, the title given to God, the God of peace, who was found out a way for peace and reconciliation between himself and sinners. So, uh, and, and that's what the, the author is making them to understand that God is not interested in the death of sinners unless they come to repentance. So, 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 so that he reconciles, so that he does not shut his door, he does not shut his eyes, even though he abhors sin. Because he's God of purity. But they still give everybody a chance to repent. So, so the great work ascribed to him, he had brought against from the dead our, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because as we read in John 3 16, said, For God loved the world, that he gave his beloved Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life 
and that will now correlate also with with what Jesus Christ said, I am the I am the door, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. So so all of them are intertwined; they all join together, and that, that's what the, the, the author of the Bible is saying here. So 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 that, so that when we are when we are blessing, when we are concluding our prayer with the grace of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Which is what we are enjoying today. So, so it's a very, very important part of prayer. It's a very, very important seal to see any prayer. So, ministers are under shepherds. The, the under shepherd, and, and Jesus Christ is the great shepherd of God. You see, the, 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 uh, and this denotes his interest in his people. They are the flock of his pasture, and his care and concern for all of them. He feeds them and he leads them and watches over them. And this is also what, what, what are the, the duties of any pastor. To feed, to lead, to teach, and to watch over them. And the way and method in which God is reconciled and Christ raised from the dead is through the blood of the everlasting covenant, which for, we've already read to because we, if you remember, in the Levitical order, they were using the, the blood of animals to atone for sin every year. So, 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 which means that even the high priest too, he has to, to to atone for his own sin to every year. But when Christ came now, he atoned for our sin only once, only once. And that is why we, the other time I was asking Pastor Pa, how can we crucify Jesus Christ a second time? And he explained to us, he explained to us, because the, the atonement has already been done, it's final. So we don't need to go back again to sin, to, to crucify Jesus a second time. And that is what he's saying here. So, 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 that, so, that, so that we have been made perfect, the perfection of the saints in every good work is the great thing desired by them and for them that they may have a great perfection of integrity, a clear mind, a clean heart, a lively affection, regular and resolved will, and suitable strength for every good work to which they are called to do, and at least a perfection of degree to fit them for the employment and felicity of heaven. So, 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 this, this I mean, this thing is so beautiful. Look, look at the way it describes us for us. So, so that, that salvation we receive in Christ is perfect. It's prepared us, and the only way we can benefit from the, the only way we, we, we can accomplish it is through the Word of God by coming together every night, every every Wednesday, every Wednesday, so that so that so that we, we can benefit from this. He said the way in which God makes His people perfect, it is by working in them always what is pleasing in his sight and that through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever so we, we have every opportunity here and, and we must continue to try our best as much as possible to make sure that we do not, we do not miss the road to heaven it's, and the salutation is said the salutation is said from himself to them directed to all the ministers who had ruled over them and to all the saints to them all ministers and people he said from the christians in italy a good thing to have the law of the holy one and kindness written so so the author is so beautifully written that he, 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 he was writing uh, as if to say we are you are writing a letter to your family and that's exactly what he's doing here he said grace be with you all amen so let the favor of God be towards you, and His grace and continually working in you and with you, bringing forth the fruit of holiness as the first fruit of glory. And when the people of God have been conversing together by word or by writing, it is good to part with prayer, desiring for each other the continuance of the gracious presence of God, that they may meet together again in the world of peace. So, so we are we are on the right track, because there's no meeting we we hold in Mount Zion Fellowship Church without praying together, without saying the grace, and that is very 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 important. 
So once again, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank our General Basia for giving us this wonderful opportunity to be able to come together every Wednesday night. Satan is a liar. Satan has not denied us the opportunity. We, we couldn't go to church because of the lockdown. But we are, we are in the church too. We are under the canopy of Christ, under the bank of the Holy Spirit to come together and learn and talk together. So I want to thank you, sir. Pastor Mana. And then, then all my, my, my co-workers, Pastor Pa, Power Guard, our bank, all of you, I thank you so much. So this concludes the end of Hebrew, the book of Hebrew. And then the general Basia will tell us which one to start next week. So is there any question at all? Any contribution? Any question before we close? Hello? Any contribution? <laughs>
Can Pastor Mana pray for us, thanking God for, for this long journey from verses one from chapter one to chapter thirteen ending tonight. Ah, wow. Let us pray. Pastor Mana, please.